A very warm welcome to our Harvest Festival service. Today we have departed from our usual service of Holy Communion and produced a Harvest Festival service instead, which combines music and liturgy from the Book of Common Prayer and our Liquid Worship Church, which is our junior church. As we bring together young and old, we remember particularly today the threat to our climate and the effect this will have on our harvest in the future if we do not take action now. We are all invited to think this morning, what can we do to help?
As we stand, so we make our confession together. Almighty God, to, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins, to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The lesson is taken from Joel, chapter 2, beginning at the 21st verse. Do not fear, O soil. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Do not fear, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The tree bears its fruit, the fig tree and vine give their full yield. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the later rain as before. The threshing floors shall be full of grain, the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer and the cutter, my great army which I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I, the Lord, am your God, and there is no other. And my people shall never again be put to shame. Here endeth the lesson. Gospel is written in the sixth chapter of Paul's first letter to Timothy, beginning at verse 6. Of course there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment, for we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be, be to thee, O Christ. 
we say the creed together. We believe and trust in God, the Father who made the world. We believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed the world. We believe and trust in the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. Amen. And may I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. A few weeks ago I went fishing on the River Tyne. It was the first time I'd ever fished on this river, but one of our party had been brought up in Northumberland, and he remembered a time when there were no fish at all in the river. Forty years ago the river was so polluted, polluted that there were no salmon, sea trout, or even brown trout. However, there has been a concerted effort over the last few decades to clean up the river. And as a result today, it's full of fish. And one of our group was lucky enough to catch a beautiful salmon on our first day. Indeed, we saw lots of salmon throughout the week. Unfortunately, however, we've not just polluted our rivers, but we have polluted the whole planet as well. The Prime Minister said last week, we are doing such irreversible damage that before long we will have made this beautiful planet effectively uninhabitable, not just for us but for many other species. He warned that it was time for humanity to grow up. But Boris Johnson was just reiterating something that many had been saying for some time. Our most distinguished naturalist David Attenborough said, if we have not taken dramatic action within the next decade, we could face irreversible damage to the natural world. The youngest commentator, Greta Thunberg, has been saying something very similar for some considerable time. She said, time is much shorter than we think. Failure means disaster. The changes required are enormous, and we must all contribute in every part of our daily life, especially us in the rich countries, where no nation is doing nearly enough. She went on to point out, we use a hundred million barrels of oil every day. There are no politics to change that. There, there are no rules to keep that oil in the ground. So we can't save the world by playing by the rules, because the rules have to be changed. Everything needs to change. Mark those words, everything needs to change. And unless immediate action is taken in this climate crisis, it will have grave implications for us all. So often I find that the words of the youngest commentator seem to speak the most clearly and most loudly. After all, she, Greta, is going to be the beneficiary, if that is the right word, of all our actions or lack of them. What we do affects our children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Some of them are here in church this morning. But she poses the fundamental question to all of us today. What are we going to do to contribute in every part of our daily life? Great question. We need to examine every part of our lives. Let's think first about travel. Why do we need to fly at all? Why do we need to fly abroad? Should we fly just for leisure and not for business? Why not use Zoom instead? What car do we drive? If we drive petrol or diesel cars, when are we going to change them? Then think about heating. How do we heat our houses? I see lorries going up and down the Yorkshire Dales, filling up oil tanks, and think that this is ridiculous. If we use fossil fuel, when are we going to stop? and use electricity instead, and invest in renewables such as solar energy. And then our food, what food do we eat? Like so many of my generation, we have two children who are now vegetarians on environmental grounds. How can we reduce our consumption of meat? And what about the carbon footprint of our food? Is it really sensible to be transporting meat from Australia and New Zealand? It makes no environmental sense at all to transport a lamb chop 8,000 miles across the planet. But for the sake of yet more profit, we seek trade deals at ever greater distances. 
but what profit is it to anyone if we destroy our children's planet when we do so? And what about incidentals? All those items in our lives that are quite frankly unnecessary, but with environmental cost. I'm a great fan of Dragon's Den, and Deborah Meaden, if you know her, made a public pledge last year not to buy any new clothes, shoes or handbags for 12 months. As she put it, I've been thinking about our national, national obsession with consumerism for some time, she said. I'd also been contemplating all the clothes, bags and shoes in my dressing room, and I realised I had enough to last a lifetime without buying a single item. How many of us fit into that category, that category of unnecessary waste? These are difficult decisions, but as Kermit the Frog famously said, it's not easy being green. Today is Harvest Festival, when we give thanks to God for all the world produces and for giving us all enough to eat. But the big message to take away from today is that we need urgent climate change action or our crops will fail in the future. It is time to grow up. Everything needs to change. But the story of my fishing chip should be an inspiration for all of us. Forty years ago, the River Tyne was so polluted that there were no fish at all. However, by taking action to clean it up today, it thrives again once more. It may not be easy being green, but it can be done. Amen.
Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And let us pray. Generous God, at this harvest time we thank you for all the good things you give us. As we thank you for our food, we remember all those who do not have enough for even one proper meal each day. We pray for the homeless and those who depend on the charity of others. We pray for the work of the local food banks, providing food for those in need. Help us to share the harvests of the world more fairly, so everyone can be fed and there will be no more hunger. Lord of the harvest, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, at this harvest time, we thank you for the hard work of all those who grow, protect and prepare our food. For the shopkeepers, the transport delivery drivers, the processors and the farmers. Bless all those, Lord, who do not earn a fair day's pay for their hard work, both at home and abroad. Help us to buy local produce and fairly traded goods wherever we can, so that everyone can work with dignity and poverty will be no more. Lord of the harvest, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
at this harvest time. We thank you for the world we see around us, for the flowers, the trees and the animals. Bless all those who care for them, Lord. Help us to protect your creation by being careful about how we use your resources. Help us to work together to prevent global warming so that there will be clean water, clean air, food and security for all. Lord of the harvest, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We give thanks for all that is good in your creation and all who bring in the harvest of the sea and the land. We are conscious of so much that we get wrong. So we give thanks too for your grace and patience with us when we fail to look after your world as we should. Help us to be good stewards of your creation, walking in the light of your gospel. Lord of the harvest, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. At this harvest time, we ask for your blessing on our families, friends and neighbours, and on those who are sick. We pray for those whose lives have been gathered into your presence, whose work here is done. Help us to recognise the interdependence of all life and the importance of just relations and community, and help us to become good stewards of all you continue to give us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord of the harvest, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Source of all life and giver of all that is good, hear our prayers and grant us all that is in accordance with your will. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And as our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say together, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen.
May God, who clothes the lilies of the field and the birds of the air, who leads the lambs to pasture and the deer to water, who multiplied loaves and fishes and changed water into wine, lead us and feed us now and through all eternity. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.